crazy budget. Shot. Don't deserve. We deserve. What specific policies will you put in place to reduce the crime rate and street violence? And I think the main driver of crime in our communities is poverty. And I think that poverty is the most violent thing that happens in our communities. When the unemployment rates go, go down, so do the crime rates. When there's more opportunity, there's less crime. So first it's about investing, making sure there's opportunities for everybody who lives in, this, in our city. And there are places where people can go and also opportunities for work. As far as the short term dealing with the crime that exists today, I very much believe in what we call community policing, which is the idea that police would walk the streets or bicycle the streets, create relationships with the uh, neighborhoods that they're policing, and therefore it's a mutual relationship where the police have a good relationship with the community, and the community has a good relationship with police. And I think that will prevent crime because it creates more of a community feel, and anytime you're creating community and investing in social capital, you will lower the crime. In order to reduce crime rate and street violence in Boston, we need to make sure that we're supporting the residents of Boston um, and primarily make sure that we're supporting the youth of our neighborhoods. Uh, youth Jobs is a really important program. We know that the more we're able to put youth at work during the summer and, and during the school year, um, it decreases crime and, and deviant activities. So we've got to provide more youth jobs. It's a really good investment. We've got to provide better education opportunities for our youth to make sure that they can actually be in careers and, and find internships and apprenticeships. And those kind of programs, programs are really important. We also need to make sure that the adults can find jobs and that those who are uh, sustaining families have livable wages and jobs that are really good. And so um, Voltec programs that come out of Madison Park into uh, and going into our community colleges like the new partnership between Madison Park and RCC needs to be supported. We need to expand that and make sure that it's working. Uh, jobs that are um, clearly available for our residents need to have a pipeline of people who are trained and able to get them. And then I also say we need better coordination. We need better coordination at the city level with um, services and um, those who are in communities running organizations and working with our young people and families in a way that supports the families and decreases crime. And then lastly, I would say community policing is a good thing to support. Uh, the better relationship we have with our police force, then the better we're able to um, help uh, prevent crimes in the neighborhood. And I think we need to see that a lot of this is about focusing on uh, those pieces that destabilize families, individuals, streets, neighborhoods. So, We've got to focus on better recovery for people who are addicted to drugs or alcohol. We need better me mental health services for people who are uh, in crisis and depression. We need people, uh, better services for people uh, who are living in trauma. Uh, and we need a real focus uh, to go street by street, focused on creating opportunity for families and for individuals uh, to reduce violence. One of the best things we can do is create great jobs. We want to make sure people have opportunities to get great jobs and make a, make a good living. Uh, that goes a long way. I think part of that means that we've got to convert summer jobs to year-round jobs connected to our schools for all of our young people so that young people don't make decisions to go down bad paths because we don't give them another good pathway uh, to an opportunity. I think that that's a key to reducing violence uh, in our neighborhoods. And I want to see us uh, come up with a real plan that is uh, in part uh, formed and driven by three groups of people. People in reentry, who can tell us a lot about why people might go down a bad path. People in recovery, who are getting clean and sober. Uh, and survivors. We need to listen more uh, to the families who have lost loved ones to violence and are left to pick up the pieces and live the rest of their life uh, having lost a loved one. If we listen to people who have been directly impacted by violence, directly impacted by uh, destabilizing forces in our neighborhoods, uh, we can come up with a great plan to make sure that everyone can live in a safe and healthy neighborhood. I think long term is improving the educational system in our city, keeping kids in school. I think a lot of the kids that are, that are causing the crime or, or, or doing the crime in Boston are kids that dropped out of school, don't have an, an education. I don't have a lot of opportunities, so I think long term, ultimately, fixing the school system. Short term, I think there's a whole bunch of things we have to do. I think one is we have to try and provide opportunities for young people, whether it's a GED, so if they don't have the high school diploma, 
so they can obtain a job. We need more job training. I think another one is we need more programming in Boston to deal with drugs and alcohol addiction. I don't think we have enough programs to deal with drugs and alcohol addiction. And I also think we have to work with our police department as far as letting them understand the challenges that young people have and people that are on the, hanging on the corner. Not all kids in the corner that are involved in, in some of this crime are bad kids. They're, they're misguided or they're, they've been misled. And I think we have to work with them to try and get them back on the, same, the right track. The opposite of violence is not necessarily peace, but opportunity. And I think opportunity is the greatest defeater of violence. And it, it's why I believe in summer jobs. It's why I was one of the first voices to ever say in 2006, long before summer jobs was the mantra, to say that summer jobs is a great cure for, for violence in our communities. Uh, jobs in general, opportunities in general, is a great cure for violence in our communities. Um, opportunity is what's going to change uh, what's happening in our, in our neighborhoods. First is that I'm going to work closely with the Boston police. Um, they are our first responders. We look to the police to keep our community safe and in fact the police put their lives on the line to keep our community safe. I think we can use technology to help address some of the um, issues we've faced around gun violence in some of our tougher areas. Um, maybe it's um, being able to put cameras, place them in strategically in areas where we know that there's sort of a, a high incidence of crime. I think that there is an opportunity to be more strategic around going after sort of high impact players, the folks who are really wreaking havoc on our community. We know that's not the majority of our residents. We need to remember that and we need to be able to pull all the stakeholders together to address this issue, issues of gun violence. We can involve groups like Mothers for Justice and Equality, for example. I'm on the advisory committee for Mothers for Justice and Equality and they do a wonderful job advocating for safer communities. I will, as mayor, involve various groups like MJE, like Project Right, like the Lewis D. Brown Peace Initiative and others to come to the table and work with law enforcement to make our communities better places for our families. It's about working in the schools, doing anti-violence work in the schools. I run a curriculum, an anti-violence curriculum. It's about partnering with non-profit organizations doing anti-violence work. It's about supporting victims and witnesses, and it's a whole host of things uh, that will help make our neighborhood safer. So it's a three-pronged approach, prevention, intervention, and then enforcement. Sometimes the harshest, the hardest criminals have to be punished and have to be taken off the streets to protect all citizens. But for most people, you know, prevention first with young children. So there'll be a lot more outreach to schools, to community groups, to sports teams, uh, to invest in the kind of work early in life to do prevention work. When we find at-risk youth who are getting ready to veer into guns and gangs and violence, aggressive intervention programming has to take place to get them back in school and on the straight and narrow. And of course, as I mentioned, enforcement. So these, you know, I've, I've, uh, it, when I was a city councilor, I was really a huge proponent and continue to be of community policing. Uh, that also has to be done. We need to build better relationships between police and the community. I want my police officers out of their cars, talking to the people, building relationships with the young people, building trust. So there's a number of things I'd like to see happen if I'm elected mayor. Boston is already a safe city, but we can never rest on our laurels, and we can always do a lot better. And I go back to education, again, as the great opportunity to reverse uh, poverty, to reverse dependence, and hopefully as a result of that, reduce crime even further.